I don't have to ask you if you've ever worried about money, because most of us have. Some of us worry about money every single day. Some of us worry about maybe whether we can afford to go back to school or send one of our kids to college. Some of us worry about paying off that huge debt we have or just paying the bills at the end of the month. Money and worry seem to go hand in hand, but you need to know that God does not want you to worry about your money. In fact, uh, the same way that a loving parent wants to provide for the needs of their child, if you know Jesus, then God is your loving Father and He wants to provide for your needs. So a couple years ago, I had this money scare happen to me and my wife and our family. Um, I'm, I'm a contractor and so I have to make quarterly tax payments. Most people have their taxes taken out of their paycheck automatically. I don't. I actually have to save that money and, and make those payments four times a year. And so I had this quarterly tax payment coming up and normally I was really good, uh, we're really frugal with our money, we don't spend a lot on uh, unnecessary purchases, and I normally am really good at saving for that, but this time around I had no money in the bank to pay it. And it was a $2,000 payment. And the reason I had no money in the bank at that time was because our third child was on the way and we were making midwife payments, but we also had to get a bigger car in order to hold all our kids, our three kids. Um, so we had just bought a car, um, and, we, and we were making these payments every month and I just didn't have any money left to make this tax payment. And I, be, and I began to get worried, you know? I mean, wouldn't anybody, like I had two weeks to pay $2,000 and I didn't have any of it. And so I had two sources of income happening that month. One, I had some hourly contract work that was gonna make me enough money to cover our living expenses. And then two, I had one video project that I was working on that was gonna make me enough money to cover the bills at the end of the month. And besides that, I had no other income I could see that month. And I was a little inexperienced in that area of life. Uh, making that tax payment wasn't as important as I thought it was gonna be. And so I got together with my wife and we actually prayed about it. And I prayed what I would consider a scary prayer. We got together and started praying and I said, God, I ask that you will give us $2,000 in less than two weeks. And so before I tell you how this story ends, I wanna tell you why it ends the way it ends. So I want to give you a little backstory and, and show you the things that God was actually teaching me about money the year before this. Jesus makes a profound statement in Matthew 16, 5 through 12. He says, watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And so Jesus and his disciples had just crossed over the Sea of Galilee and the disciples just realized that they didn't bring any food for lunch. You know, like normally they would bring bread with them to eat and yet they didn't have any. And so when Jesus starts talking about leaven, you can kind of look at leaven as, as yeast almost. It's like yeast in that it's a rising ingredient that you put into dough when you're making bread, right? To make the bread rise. And so when he starts talking about the leaven of the Pharisees, the disciples are thinking about, you know, what they don't have in their hand, right? They're thinking about that physical need they have of food. And so they're like, he's saying this because we didn't bring any bread, right? Yet the fact that Jesus had just been tested by the Pharisees literally right before this can show us that Jesus is only using leaven in an illustrative way. He's, he's using leaven, this rising ingredient in bread, to make a point. And the disciples actually missed the point completely. They were so focused on the physical, on this need that they had, that they missed the fact that Jesus was really talking about the spiritual. And he explains this to them when he says, you men of little faith, why do you discuss among yourselves that you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets full you picked up? How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Jesus is essentially saying, haven't you gotten it yet that the physical is not the most important to God? And he reminds them of this miracle he performed where he provided all this bread supernaturally for the people. And, and in, in, in reminding them of that, he's, he's showing them how if you have a physical need, I'm Jesus. I can provide it, you know, like supernaturally. And he's saying that is not the most important thing. But many of us have the same problem that the disciples had here. We're, we're looking at God's word through our physical eyes, you know, through the lens of our physical need. Because we, we need an answer to that need, right? And yet, God is more concerned with us building His kingdom and being focused on His kingdom than He is on us building our kingdoms. And what I mean by that is God wants us to focus on His kingdom so much that we're willing to follow His spiritual truths 
even when they don't make sense to our natural mind. See, God is interested in what's happening in our hearts because he knows that what's happening in our hand here, what we need, he can easily provide. And here's one specific example that applies to money. Jesus says in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. What makes the most sense to our natural minds is that if we have a certain amount and we give some of that away, we're gonna have less than we started with, right? And yet, what Jesus is saying here is when we give with the right heart, with the right motivation, we can actually expect God to provide for our needs in return. What I'm talking about is the biblical principle of generosity. And, and one of the reasons this principle is so amazing is because when we actually get it, God doesn't just promise to help us provide, right? You know, he, he doesn't promise to help us in our striving to provide. He actually takes that role, that mantle of provider off our shoulders and he puts it on himself and he promises to be the provider. And this is something I've experienced time and time again in my own life. When, when I was a lot younger, I used to pray a lot for favor and for provision. But what I didn't realize at the time was I was coming at it from the wrong direction, with the wrong perspective. What I couldn't see was that my heart was actually chasing after money, not after God. And it wasn't until I had a real encounter with God and a real understanding of God's grace that my heart began to change. And because my heart was focused on the physical, you know, and not the spiritual, that role of provider was still on my shoulders. And you probably know this, but when, when you're the provider, worry is just something that happens. You can't avoid it. And what's so amazing is that when God takes that role of provider off of your shoulders and he puts it on himself, you can stop worrying. You can stop worrying about money. And the reason is because you can simply rest in the knowledge that God is in control and that he is gonna provide. If you have any doubts at all in your mind about whether God wants to provide for you or not, take a look at this verse. Philippians 4:19 says, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So I'm gonna pull out three quick points from this verse. The first is that God can provide. He's able to provide. The second point is that God wants to provide. He wants to be your provider. The third point is that the way God makes that provision available to us is through his son, Jesus. But to better understand this verse and, and how it applies to us, we have to look at the passage directly before it. See, Paul is writing to the Philippian church and he's telling them not just that God is going to provide, but he's telling them why God is going to provide for them. And he starts in verse 15 saying, You yourselves know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel, after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving but you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. But I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Paul says this right before he tells them that God's gonna provide for all their needs. See, the provision of God in this verse that Paul is talking about is directly connected to the generosity of the Philippian church. They had heard the message of the gospel that Jesus had died on the cross to pay for their sins and that they could be forgiven simply by believing in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It was a free gift of God. So they had heard the message, they had believed the message, and they had also responded to the message through a heart of generosity. The Philippians were supporting Paul's missionary work not because they had to and not to try to get something out of it, but they were giving because their hearts were so full of gratitude based on what Jesus had done for them. The point I'm trying to make is some of us look at the financial problem we have and we assume that the answer is physical, but God often uses our money to test our hearts. Are we responding to God's love with generosity? Do we trust him enough that he's gonna provide when he says he will to respond to his truth in faith? So I wanna finish the story I started at the beginning of this video. So I had 
two weeks to come up with $2,000 and I had prayed this scary prayer to God. I had said, God, I ask that you would provide $2,000 for us in less than two weeks. And, and you need to know that the year directly before that, God had begun to teach me about this principle of generosity. He was, he was really trying to dig it down deep into my heart. And, and at three separate times that year, God asked me to give a financial you know, cash gift to three different people. Two were to people who needed the money and one was to a church. And each time that God had asked me to give these, what I considered large cash gifts, each time I thought, God, you know, I just don't know. I don't know. What if I need that money at some point, you know? And then every single time the Holy Spirit began to remind me of what Jesus had done for me on the cross. And, and I remember that verse, you know, that talks about Jesus enduring the sufferings of the cross because of the joy set before him. And what I realized in that moment was Jesus, when, when he was willing to go through the suffering and the pain and the agony uh, and the separation from God, when he was willing to go through all these things, he was thinking about our needs above his own. And so, so in those moments, I decided, you know what, I'm going to think about these other people's needs above my own, and I'm going to be obedient to God. And so I, so I had given these cash gifts, right? And then the year after that, suddenly I need $2,000, and I've got two weeks to come up with it. And I actually start to regret my generosity the previous year. Because what I realized was, if I had not given those gifts, I would have had more than enough money to cover this payment. And yet in that moment, God reminded me again of how great his love and his sacrifice for me has been. And so I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna regret being generous. I'm gonna move forward in faith and I'm gonna believe that because I'm following God's truth, God is gonna provide in a supernatural way. And so me and my wife continued to pray that prayer. God, we need $2,000. We got two weeks to come up with it, right? We, and I prayed that prayer every single day. And one week in, I finished that one video project that I had been working on. And, and like I said, that video project was gonna pay enough that I could cover the bills at the end of the month and that was it. And yet when I finished the project and I asked the client, can I send an invoice in, you know, cause I was kind of needing the money. I'll never, I'll never forget the response that I got. They said, yeah, we love the project. Go ahead and send the invoice in. And then they said, when you send the invoice, we want you to add $2,000 to the price of the project. So essentially they wanted to pay me 2,000 more than I originally agreed to work for. And this was after I had completely finished the project. And the question that, I, that kept running over in my mind was, who does something like that? Who does that? And this is the answer I came up with. God does. Psalm 3410 says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good Thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go check out my book called Stop Worrying. This book covers a lot of areas that we as humans have a tendency to worry about. I've even dedicated a whole chapter to money and provision. I hope you read this book. I believe it's going to bless you. And also don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I love y'all and I'll see you next time. Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. I want to let you know about my brand new book. It's called Stop Worrying. There's an entire chapter in this book about uh, overcoming worry that's associated with money, with financial problems. Um, I've, I've had my fair share of facing situations where I thought to myself, there's no way I can come up with the money necessary to solve this problem. And yet, through God's word, the principles that he has set out for us to understand in his word, and also through the still small voice of his Holy Spirit, uh, God has gotten me to a, pl to a place where I'm able to look at money as something that we can use for God's kingdom, but not something I have to ever worry about. It's something that I know deep down that He is going to provide for me and for my family. So if that is an issue that you worry about ever, I really encourage you to get this book. It's available in print and as an ebook on Amazon.com. You can also find links to it on TroyBlackVideos.com. I love y'all so much, and I'll see you next time.